Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled, am I the a-hole for not letting my new neighbors use my driveway when I let the previous one? The reason I am asking is because they were slash are in the middle of building a garage which they won't be able to use unless I let them use my driveway. Not sure if it is relevant, but I am 29, the neighbors are probably in their early 30s and my previous neighbor was 78. I allowed my previous neighbor to use my driveway roughly a year and a half ago to get to his yard to park his car on his back terrace. He had no fence there and my backyard is fenced. After he asked me he told me he was having trouble finding a parking spot on our busy street and he was no longer able to walk bigger distances. I would rather not allow anything like that most of the time, but we were always on good terms and well, it didn't really hurt me as I only had one car at the time, so I didn't need the extra space he would need to pass my car and get to his terrace. Just to be clear, from the back of my backyard in a straight line to the edge of my neighbor's house all the way to the sidewalk is mine. There is no right of passage, no shared ownership, it is all mine. Around 5 months ago, my neighbor moved out and went to live in assisted living. His daughter put his house up for sale and that is as much as I know about that, I figured it would go back to how it was. My grandpa since gifted me his two motorcycles which take up roughly the space of a car and my girlfriend is over at my house 5 out of 7 days so the situation has changed in terms of space and I utilize the full width of the driveway. The house was sold 3 months ago. Anyhow, I went on a holiday for about 3 weeks shortly after and I come home to a bunch of cars and machines sitting in my driveway with a bunch of dudes building a garage where my neighbor's terrace was. It got really heated as I made all the construction guys and their stuff get the hell off of my property and later I had a huge argument with the neighbors where they claimed they bought the house with the driveway and how half the driveway was theirs. I told them I had all my paperwork in order, but they can call the local council to have them send one of their dudes to measure it. After that they quickly shifted gear stating they had right of passage because the previous owner had it. I told them that I personally allowed him to temporarily use my driveway because of his age and walking issues. After a lot more cursing I told them I was done talking and the next time I see them park on my driveway I will have them towed and report them for trespassing. I ended up extending my fence out of petty spite, essentially blocking in their garage and closing the opening. They have been over several times trying to get me to agree to give them right of way, offering to purchase part of the driveway and so forth. My girlfriend has been there since the start and has recently told me that I am being a bit of a jerk as the neighbors likely bought the place thinking they had right of way. So am I the a-hole? And guys I would love to hear from you whether you think OP is really the a-hole here or not, but honestly in my opinion he is definitely not the a-hole because there was no written agreement whatsoever, unless I missed it, with the previous neighbor and even if there was, I don't think it would be essentially grandfathered in for the new neighbors. As far as I can tell this was a verbal agreement and yes it would be nice of OP to continue it, however there's really no reason to do this or no incentive especially because the neighbors act like entitled a-holes. Anyway, a user in the comments said, absolutely not the a-hole, you allowed a temporary situation, not a permanent one. And with different people. They should have checked their paperwork. Putting up a fence and establishing a permanent barrier for your house was probably the best way to keep this from dragging out forever. Another user agreed and said, not the a-hole, when you buy a house you make sure you know exactly where the property lines lie. They are lying about, well, you let the old guy do it tells me that they did check the property lines and they know exactly where they are, they were just relying on your good nature. And another user also said, not the a-hole, you were being kind to an old man with mobility issues, that doesn't equal giving up use of your property forever. 
And the next one is titled Shady Apartment Management Firm Tries to Screw Me, Everyone, Over, Ends Up Losing a Ton of Tenants and Income. When I first moved to the region, I had to abruptly end my home search due to a sudden death in the family. As a result, I signed on the first place that had the amenities I wanted and fit within my budget. I didn't have the time to do any real background checking on the neighborhood or management association, so yeah, my bad. To say it was mismanaged is an understatement, but the place was taken over by a far more professional firm shortly before my lease expired and since this place was walking distance from a soon to be complete metro extension, I decided to stick it out. The new firm did a significantly better job at first, but that didn't last long. Soon they were underpaying for waste management, so garbage stations became festering piles of loose garbage, construction made the overflow parking situation infinitely worse, emergency maintenance orders took up to two weeks to be answered, billing went haywire and people, me, were being charged twice for rent. And then had to fight for weeks to at least get that payment credited towards the next month. They tried more than once to keep it claiming I owed non-existent back rent. But I finally had enough. So this neighborhood had insufficient street parking and due to construction associated with metro expansion, residents were no longer allowed to park on the main street. The neighborhood had always told people to park in an unpaved gravel lot, even included it on the map for new tenant orientation. The thing is though, they didn't own that lot, the city did. As a result, the neighborhood took zero responsibility for security, maintenance and upkeep of that lot and it started being used to dump construction garbage and hide stolen cars. And wow ripe stars, that went from zero to 100 fairly quickly. Anyway, my breaking point came when there was a gunfight in the lot and a stray bullet went through my neighbor's window, the neighborhood charged him to replace the window by the way. Figured I would kill a few birds with one stone so to speak. I reported the illegal dumping to code enforcement, the criminal activity to state and local police and the illegal land use to the city slash county that owned the property. For a week nothing happened and then I started seeing code enforcement, surveyors, police etc all over the lot taking notes and photos. Within a few weeks the garbage was gone, the abandoned and stolen cars were towed and a fence was put up to prevent anyone from accessing the lot. I moved soon after and apparently so did a lot of other tenants. Last I checked, rent was decreased by around 30%, there are a ton of vacancies and the shady office staff has all been replaced. I know that there were some fines levied because of the garbage situation, the illegal use of government property and some other fines. There were also lawsuits regarding their shady billing practices. Oh and that metro expansion? I moved out 5 years ago and it is still not done. And guys even though this story was not about an HOA, I definitely see some similarities. I would say this apartment management firm seems even shadier than a lot of the HOAs we hear about. Either way, if you hate both HOAs and shady management firms, then please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much for your amazing support. And the next one is part of a little 3 update series and the first one is titled My Neighbor, The Hatch and The Pandemic Saga Part 1. I have posted about my neighbor before, but this one shocked me. So today in the middle of the day, I've been working at home, my old lady neighbor came over and knocked on the door. So I opened it up and talked to her briefly. She was complaining that my hatch has not been trimmed in a while and she really wants it trimmed. This is the hatch on my property that she somehow thinks she has the right to tell me that she wants it her way. After getting past it, this exchange took place, just me trying to be friendly. Me, so how are you doing? You staying healthy? I saw that you were walking your dogs yesterday. Her, oh yes, I've been doing okay. I try to walk my dogs every day to keep moving. At my age, if you stop moving, it's hard to get started again. Yes, it's very good to keep moving. I did, however, I have to go to the hospital this week. Oh, are you okay? Yes, I went because I've been having this cough and I don't know why. And when I went in they decided because of my symptoms that they are testing me for the virus. 
Hmm, okay then, I hope it comes back negative. Then I close the door. Who the hell goes next door to complain about a hatch being overgrown, which by the way, is not even yours, if you have just been tested because you have the symptoms of the virus. What the hell? And yeah guys, I guess some people just value their hatch higher than the health of their neighbor. And the next one is titled, More of my next door neighbor, Saga Part 2. I have posted before about her, complaints about my hatch blocking her view and that my van is ugly, but here is a new one. On 25th June I had surgery that didn't go as planned. Since then I've spent 25 days in the hospital, have been taken to the hospital 3 times by ambulance and have had a whole herd of nurses come to the house to give me care. I'm doing better now and I expect my neighbors to be curious, but she is entitled and annoying. Here is an exchange I overheard between her and one of my nurses. Annoying neighbor. Hi, are you a nurse? Nurse, yep. Annoying neighbor. Why are you here? Nurse, just providing care. I cannot tell you more than that without their permission. Annoying neighbor. Well, can you tell me if it is the man or woman getting care? No, I cannot tell you that. But I need to know. Are you family? No, I live next door. Then I cannot tell you. You should tell me. If they have something that I can get, you legally have to tell me. No, I don't. Medical records are private. If you want to know, ask them yourself. Well, I asked one of the other nurses that came over and she said she would tell me. I doubt that, otherwise you would know. She just ran out of time to tell me, so you should just tell me. I'm not telling you. Well, the other neighbor across the street knows what's going on, so one of the nurses had to tell him, but he won't share with me, so you should just tell me. I told the other neighbor because they are not a pain in my ass and I like and have become friends with them. Nurse, I'm sorry, I cannot and will not tell you. I need to go inside now. A.N. You need to move your car then, you cannot park where you are. I'm parked on the street where other cars are parked, why can't I park here? Neighbor, well, someone else who lives in this neighborhood might need to park there. Nobody ever parks there except people visiting me, by the way. Nurse. Okay, well, I'm not moving my car and I need to go inside. Neighbor. Wait, do they have the virus? I don't want to get the virus. I cannot tell you that. Bye. The annoying neighbor then stood on the sidewalk watching my door for about 10 minutes huffing until she left. Destroy our tree? We will destroy your driveway. Full disclosure, this happened almost 5 years ago so my memory of this is a little fuzzy at times. However, the major player here confirmed that it is accurate enough to get the story across. So I am going with it. It's also kinda lengthy so there is a TLDR at the end. Background, by North American standards our house is old. It is really old, it is older than the town. Hell, it is older than Confederation. The house was originally built by a merchant from the area like 200 years ago. It is old, with its age comes a very big property line and apart from a couple adjustments here and there to account for infrastructure and housing development, it is basically unchanged from a hundred years ago. It rarely ever comes up here, but in any dispute relating to property lines, the official town plan takes precedent and our property line crosses over into our neighbor's property. This will be important later. And now for the two major players in this tale, our a-hole neighbor, who we will call Lumpy, he is just the worst. He ran an illegal chop shop in his backyard and seemed to be deathly afraid of trees. He also always took a two week long vacation in summer and it was always at the end of July, this part is also important later. The other one is my dad, at the time he was in government oversight but before that he was in the department of justice. And his major responsibilities included training crown attorneys, this included the attorneys general. In the pecking order, dad was actually pretty low but the crown knew and respected him. And they were keenly aware that dad knew the law inside and out and if there was anything even remotely resembling a legal dispute, dad was almost always in the right with his argument. Now we begin our tale, the slide. The line between our yard and Lumpy's was pretty clear, our side was grass, protestant lilies, shrubs and trees, his was a gravel driveway, before the incident there was a large Manitoba maple tree growing there. 
It was very old but grew in such a way that it blocked just enough sunlight to have a pleasant level of light going through the window. We had no intentions of ever removing it, maybe trim it a little if it got too close to the windows. However, some lower branches were sagging onto Lumpy's driveway, so he asked if he could cut down some of the lower branches so that his car would not get damaged when he drove in and out. It was a fair enough request and he did ask permission first, so we told him to get a landscaper and a quote. Because we sure as hell were not going to let Lumpy do it and we're okay paying for that. A couple days later we were all on a day trip somewhere and when we got back Lumpy comes over and tells us not to worry about the landscaper because he took care of it. Red flags were waving at that statement. So we went and checked the tree, the dude cut the entire tree down and then to add insult to injury he painted the stump with some sort of weird grey stuff. Don't know what it was, but it had to have been toxic as F because nothing ever grew on that stump again, not even fungi. So we are understandably pissed off, but unfortunately there's nothing we can do about it because there's no proof. So now we've got a stump that was once a beautiful tree, a smug neighbor and seemingly no course of action to take. Dad did not accept that scenario and he had a plan. The plan? As I said earlier, Dad knew the law inside and out, so he began to plan things out. He made a few phone calls to the town's civil architect, a couple inspectors, the local landscaper Lumpy was going to get that quote from, and a contractor. He visited City Hall and got a copy of the official town plan, which, remember, is the final word on property lines. He had everything arranged and now he began to wait. Now on to the revenge. Like clockwork Lumpy went on vacation and the plan was enacted. Over the course of two weeks we expanded, we rebuilt our fence to new dimensions, rearranged the shrubs, dug up the gravel driveway and put fresh dirt and grass over it. And planted a weeping willow in a spot where, as it grew, would always hang and shed into Lumpy's yard. With the expanded fence and shrubbery, Lumpy's driveway was a small strip of pavement, maybe half a meter wide. The fence placed an old dying maple and a hawthorn on our side, but because of how the two trees grew, most of it was on Lumpy's side. The key point is that the placement of the trunk dictates whose property it is on, so it is our tree that he cannot touch no matter how annoying or destructive it is. With the new dimensions, the chop shop he was running was now on our side of the fence, but because it was illegal, it was just scrap metal as far as the law was concerned, so we sold it to a local scrapyard. By the time Lumpy came back, our yard had expanded almost 3 meters into his yard and waiting for him was dad, the civil architect and a lawyer with a stack of documents outlining in full detail that what they did was 100% legal and there was not a thing he could do about it. Edit, not sure how it happened, but it was supposed to say that we told Lumpy to get the quote and that we would pay for the landscaper because we didn't want Lumpy to do it himself. Second edit, aftermath, Lumpy apparently tried to press charges something along the lines of trespassing or destruction of property or something ridiculous like that. I had moved out of town at the time, so I don't know for sure what happened, but I like to think the judge just threw the case out. Like I said, everything was above board and completely legal. What I do know he did was tear up a part of his lawn and put in a new driveway. He still had room for it, but it also cut his lawn in half and he had to pay to have the sidewalk adjusted into a ramp. Also, because the town was paying attention now, he had to have it done properly with like asphalt and stuff instead of gravel like before. He is also apparently planning to move out and rent the property to others. Third edit, explanations. Okay, I feel I need to include a couple things just to make sure everything relevant is known. Adverse possession. Under Canadian property law, adverse possession takes place after a number of years of continuous, notorious and open possession. In Ontario, it means that for 10 continuous years, the squatter has to be openly using the land and making no attempt to hide that fact. However, it has to be 20 years before the land can be legally changed over to the squatter's name for absolute ownership. 
Lumpy had been there for more than 10 years but less than 20, he could make a possession claim but not an ownership claim, but none of it applied to him anyway for two reasons. Number one, he only openly claimed the driveway and never the backyard. For him to claim the part of his backyard we repossessed, he would have to admit to the illegal chop shop's presence or he would have to claim it was a ridiculously large pile of scrap metal. In either case, it would be removed because having either violated a town by law. Number one, side note, when the fences were moved and the chop shop was on our side, we, being legally obligated, had everything involved hauled away and used part of the very substantial payment for the metal to pay the fine for having a large scrap metal pile on our property. Like I said, dad kept everything above board. Number two, in Ontario, under the Land Titles Act, a property owner can convert their ownership to land title ownership. In situations like this, the squatter has to have been using the land in question a minimum of 10 years before the property was converted into a land title. For example, if a property was converted in 1985, the squatter has to have been there since at least 1975 to be able to make a claim. My parents closed on the house in 1993 and dad made certain that the property was converted to a land title because he immediately had an extension built and the land title ownership made the paperwork easier somehow, don't know the details, I'm just a library technician, not a legal expert. Number one, my point being that Lumpy would have had to have been using that area since at least 1983 for him to claim adverse possession and he moved into his house about three years after us and made the driveway not long after. We didn't care much, the bushes and fence line were in place long before we moved in, but we also knew that he was using our land if it ever came to that, which it obviously did. Paying for the tree branches, the original draft stated that we were going to make Lumpy pay for a landscaper to trim the tree. While that was a mistaken sentence on my part, we were under no obligation to acquiesce to his request nor pay for it. It is our tree on our land and we were not bothered by its presence whatsoever. If dad wanted to be rude, he could have taken the position of, you want it done, you pay for it. But he didn't want it because that would have been rude, legal and the right course of action, but rude. We decided to get it done because it was a reasonable request and we are willing to pay a professional to do it because we didn't want Lumpy to do it himself for retroactively obvious reasons. Lumpy's reaction slash fate, I wasn't there at the time but dad told me that Lumpy's face was a lovely blend of crimson and puce. And that his general demeanor was a combination of sputtering silent rage and rapidly dying in sight. He is still living there and probably cannot afford to move out, he retaliates by mowing his lawn as early as he can get away with it every day. On the dying maple he wanted to cut down but cannot now because of the fence, there is a bunch of woodpeckers. They are nice and loud, but oddly soothing in a way, and there's also a family of crows building a nest in some of our Angleman ivy growing on the house. They don't like Lumpy. Bird update, the crows moved elsewhere and a group of blue jays and some whiskey jacks have taken residence here, they don't like anybody. Another update, Lumpy has since gotten approval to renovate into a duplex, it is all above board. He even asked dad for advice to make sure there was no major issues. The relationship was cordial. At least it was until a new event happened, Lumpy and dad have now joined forces against a new enemy, but that is still an ongoing battle right now, stay tuned friends. More updates, joining forces, they joined forces because of the lot behind us, there used to be housing there but it was old, decreeped and burned down years ago and the land kept getting tossed around between owners. Well, a land developer bought it and got approval, through likely shifty methods but that is just my own intuition, to build an apartment complex. Three floors and they have to dig underground parking to maximize tenant space. All of this was done and filed before either Lumpy or my parents were informed. Now this plan is stupid and won't go anywhere because the engineers will give up when they start digging and hit the Canadian shield less than 3 feet down, but in the meantime we have to deal with the incoming BS. Now Dad and Lumpy have a plan that is less revenge and more malicious compliance, maybe petty revenge, cannot really say much else about it right now. And now the final update. 
So since the last update a small pandemic shut the country down, apparently the head of the contracting firm the land developer hired was one of the victims. Honestly, I don't know nor do I care, in any case the land owners had to hire a company that is significantly less shady than the guys they originally hired. I can't say for certain, but I suspect that the owners were left out of the contractor's office, either way nobody is building any apartments, because they would never be able to build a legal foundation for it. The owner is stuck with a half hectare of useless land he cannot do anything with to sink the cost of what he paid for it. What the revenge would have been, Dad told me that he and Lumpy were going to basically shore up our sides of the back fences and create a scenario where it would fall onto that land creating a huge mess. The reason it would have worked is the weaknesses of those fences and the 3 foot drop from our land to the empty plot. The fence has needed repairs and shoring up for more than a decade, but we were never allowed to go to that side of the fence to do so. Basically, we would help the fence break, make it so the fallout spills over to that side and in the eyes of the law they would be at fault because Dad and Lumpy did all they were legally allowed to do. I called it a team up because while Dad has the legal know-how to keep him and Lumpy squeaky clean, Lumpy has contacts including somebody who owns a backhoe and tons of clean fill. But again because of the virus this is all pointless now. They did it anyway, gotta follow through once you have started. So that is that. And guys, unfortunately we have already reached the end of the video, however this is not the end of ripe content for you. I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will hopefully soon show up on the left corner of the screen, which will provide you with hundreds if not thousands of hours of ripe content. If you still haven't gotten enough then please also check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 exclusive of reddit videos that you will only find on there. Furthermore, if you want to share your own story with our community then please head on over to r slash ripe stories on reddit where you can share your own stories and there is a good chance that I might read it in a video. Thank you so much for your daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.